three seconds to go. We're tied at 90. Here comes Suggs, long three for the win. Oh! Banks at home! Banks at home! Jalen Suggs, a deep bank three to Sten Gonzaga. One step closer to history. the goodness you know we were supposed to get <laughs> this matchup on December 5th it is exactly four months later it is now April 5th and guess what we get Baylor versus Gonzaga welcome to the countdown to the final connected by Xfinity x I'm Christine Williamson he's Jason Fitz how lit are you right now, Fitz? Well, I mean, is that what the kids are going to say? Like, because when I grew up, lit meant I, like maybe I mean, you were a little. This is the kind of yeah. person that would totally Hi. use that word. <laughs> Look, I'm still on cloud nine from what we saw over the weekend, and I'm on cloud nine for this matchup we're going right. to get tonight. You said that we could have had it a few months ago. I'll even argue many college basketball pundits would argue we thought we were going to get this matchup a year ago. Going into the tournament, right. there was a real shot that we were going to get these two teams. And what we end up with is a championship game where we get the best team in the country versus the second best team in the country not just right now but throughout the duration of the season leading up to right now I mean this is if, if you are a college basketball fan this is what you live for it's great for the sport it's great for sports fans it's great for us it's great for everybody and it is going to be a hell of a game <laughs> No. Wax is actually playing in the game, so he's getting really fired Boy, up. Boy, if I get in on this game, let me tell you, the number of times, like, that would not be pretty unless they're lower in the rims and then fire a, a tiny basketball to I got itty bitty hands. Okay, we got Monica McNutt and King McClure coming through to talk about this particular matchup. But first, let's talk about the Zags versus UCLA. We were actually texting through the other game, Baylor Houston, and you texted me at halftime and you were like, what a game. And I was very upset because my guy, Quentin Grimes, had zero points. Oh. It was awful. I mean, well, and he had zero help. Like, there was, there was just nothing that <laughs> exactly. was going to happen. And I, you know, I'll be honest. We went into the second game of uh -huh. that doublehead, and, and Baylor looked so good. Right. I mean, we, we thought maybe Houston could do something. Baylor looked so good. I went into right. the second game and thought, all right, going to get another blowout. It is rare that you get the ending to a game where, follow me here, Christine, uh -huh. you are still yelling about what you thought was the ending when you have to re-yell. Like, yeah. you're going, oh, oh. <laughs> like all in one game because we had this amazing moment where UCLA made a look. We were going double overtime, and I was good with that. The game was so incredible. I was good with double overtime. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Suggs gets the ball, gets us to half court, and just floats up the bank. The bank Insane. was open off the glass, Insane. runs up on the table. That was one of those moments that I had goosebumps and adrenaline for an hour afterwards on a night that I was so exhausted. I just sat there thinking, I'm not going to sleep. College <laughs> basketball is ruling my world right I now. I mean, I just love when there's finishes. Like, this is exactly why we love March. I mean, what right. is the point? The point of March is literal madness. And the fact that Jalen Suggs, it's a team that we wanted to see in the final. We talked about that game. We talked about that matchup. I'm no offense to UCLA fans, but I did not want to see UCLA in a final, especially against Baylor, and they gave us what we wanted. Yeah, I mean, anytime that you can get the opportunity to get epic finishes along the way, but still get the cream rising to the top, and that's, again, that's no discredit to UCLA. I, I will argue until I am blue in the face that the Pac-12 got a lot of respect during the course of this tournament. UCLA particularly right. got a lot of respect. Their identity under Coach Cronin was really shown to a lot of fans and to a lot of prospects. I mean, what this does for recruiting, I think across the board you can look at it and say we were all – wrong about the Pac-12. I can say that one breath and say, hey, but through all of that, the conversation about, well, the Zags haven't been tested. They won't know. We can we can end all of that and now say what we have are great matchups, incredible intensity, but we still got the final that we were hoping for, the two juggernauts. Like, this is Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant right. at the end, and all the other stuff was just good. Right, yeah, I agree. Another matchup that we saw, which was lit, mm -hmm. Arizona versus Stanford on the women's side. It's not the matchup that we expected on the women's side, but that thing did not disappoint either. Yeah, and, and you're right. It's not the matchup we expected. We all thought we were going to get Paige Beckers and UConn, and right. we didn't. And instead, what we got was this Arizona team that absolutely wouldn't go away. I mean, early on, they had the lead. I really thought Stanford was going to run away with it at some point, and it felt like in the second half they had a little bit of a lead. That, that might be the moment. It uh -huh. just... It just didn't happen. I mean, oh. Arizona was everywhere. And kudos to Arizona for putting up the fight, but also incredible, incredible game by Stanford. 
Ari McDonald, too, taking that shot. I, I was watching uh, Around the Horn, Monica McNutt, she'll be joining us later, and she was asked whether or not you would have Ari McDonald take that shot because she has been doing everything for Arizona. And, and Monica was like, who else would you have take that shot? She had three defenders on her, and you would still have her take that shot. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Well, and also absolutely ridiculous. I have to give so much love to Arizona. Coach Barnes for yeah. Arizona has been an absolute sensation. Uh -huh. I mean, we all saw her her uh, motivational moment, moment after uh, <laughs> after they beat UConn where she just let them know, hey, forget you if you're not believing in me. But then we also see the moment where she's feeding her baby uh -huh. and it was such a conversation around the game in every good way. Like, if you are a, a woman that's looking at it saying, I want to go play for a coach that's going to help me get to the next stage in my mm -hmm. life, but also have that fight. Like, so much about her identity came into this as well. Right. Like, big win for Arizona, even though they didn't win the game. Women's basketball, I think, blew up in this last year and I'm very glad that they've got the visibility that they want. Still a long way to go, but we've gotten a lot of visibility still, and it's been very great. And I know that you guys on Spain and Fitz have been has been definitely amplifying that voice. Yeah, I mean, Spain and Fitz, a remarkable radio show. You can listen to it from <laughs> 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern, Monday <laughs> through Friday. Uh, we talked a lot about it, and Sarah's made the, the contention, and I would agree that mm -hmm. I think in many ways this year the women's tournament has been better oh, yeah. than the men's tournament. And, you know, we've gotten some great finishes in uh -huh. the men's tournament, but the women's tournament has been fire over and over and over right. again. What's happening right now in women's basketball. It's really fun to watch. It's inspiring to watch. It's incredible to see. It's not just a one team and everybody else at this point. There are a lot of incredible athletes playing. And it's fun to watch. Right. So Ari McDonald missed that buzzer beater, but there have been some good buzzer beaters just in general in college basketball. We've seen plenty of them. So we're going to talk about some of our favorites and Ooh. I'm going to start. Okay. Let's start in 2016. I, you, you, the ones that we we, we were so talking about. So this is number five. This. We're ranking this is our number top five. five. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we were talking about this, and a lot of the ones that you chose were a little bit earlier on. <laughs> wow, like, that is a subtle way to say I'm okay, old as got, dirt. <laughs> The 11 seed taking on Texas in uh, Northern Iowa. The 11 seed taking on Texas. <laughs> At the time was a 60. This is in 2016. There were two, 1.2 seconds left on the clock. Northern Iowa passed the ball. <laughs> I can't with this face. <laughs> Anyways, Jesperson caught the ball <laughs> and shot it up. It was, a, it was a buzzer beater. I'm sorry. I just, I just basically called Fitz old. <laughs> He's a well, um, before these, you know, young whippersnappers get into that, that that's a good one. Sorry. Uh-huh. Well, you know, back when I was a kid. All right. So no, we're, that's okay, number five. Yeah, yeah that's number five. I, I'm going to give you number four. We're going to alternate back and forth. Okay. Uh, this one is available in color. The rest will be oh in black and white, God. apparently. It is the one we were just <laughs> talking about. And look, recency bias plays oh into this, goodness. maybe. I don't know, though. I just I keep looking at this saying, you know, I don't want to be <laughs> caught up in the moment, but it's hard not to be. What the Zags accomplished in that game and the way it was tied with 3.3 seconds left was such a dramatic effort from UCLA. Right. But then to see Suggs come down and lay it, uh, uh, throw it up like that, absolutely incredible finish. The passion, the power behind it. History will talk about that game for a long time. So right. I don't want recency bias to become such a conversation that yeah, we yeah. underrate it. So it's number four. I mean, the jump on the table, he said after, like, it was, like, something that he'd always want to do. That was iconic. You he, practice he, that, right? He, yeah, like, that's exactly. not the first time you do that. Like, He's definitely at least envisioned it. Are you a big, like, box jumps person in the gym? Oh, yeah. I, well, I used to be. I used to be able to jump really high on the boxes. Well, I mean, well yeah, because you're an athlete. Do you want an athlete here? Like, right. I, I, like, I got to make sure nobody's in the gym before I try <laughs> a box jump. Like, I look around, I'm like, nobody's here. No cameras uh -huh. here we're gonna go and it's usually like more footstool jump right. like you practice the table oh jump. yeah he's yeah. been jumping on boxes all his life all right <laughs> let's go to number three this one we were giving love to the women's side let's give some love to some women Arike Agumawale this one 50 this 50 moment. 58 58 there was only three seconds left on the clock this is Notre Dame versus mm. Mississippi State a bucket she if you watch this she was not she was off balance. This shot, first of all, okay, this is my question. Would you rather, I feel like when you shoot a shot like this, you're so loose because it's tied. Like, you're going to go into overtime if you miss this one. But she was like, I get buckets. I think there's a moment where, like, look at her face there. I mean, as she's falling, she realizes, oh, God, it has a shot. It, it might be able to go in. Like, that right. level of baller is just absolutely incredible. And to your point, to be fading that way, yeah. to, like, right to left. Like, you can practice fadeaways that's all day, but not, yeah. That's, that's, that's athleticism. I would like to point out that she also had a buzzer beater versus UConn in the semifinals before that and got it. Like, yeah. she's just a straight bucket. Yeah. bucket. She's absolute, absolute incredible. That's good. 
That's good. Here we go. We're going to go a little bit white. further back from my next one on the list. And this is <laughs> one of the most iconic moments in all of college basketball uh -huh. history. It's the shot. Christian Leitner. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. And obviously, part of it is that it was a long inbounds pass. I mean, you had to uh -huh. go three, three quarters of the court around it. Back then, it went way back then. Look at me throwing in the back then references. <laughs> said it it wasn't necessarily like the, the clock wasn't as uh, metered as it is now. So there was a lot of controversy about when did it start? How did it start? He catches it, turns around, and gets the shot up for the improbable win. That's the win that beats Kentucky in the Elite Eight. So a lot of history behind that shot. Right. I hate to give Duke any love at all because we I all know say, my, my yeah. passion for it. And convenient that we picked buzzer beater so I couldn't manage – to work in the fact that UNLV beat Duke 103-73. I like to work that in every week. For I would like to work this in. UNLV, the or I'm, I'm UNLV just leaving. then lost the I'm just final leaving. Just to do I'm just leaving. Fine. I don't know. Why am I still um, Okay, let's go to our number one. This one is probably one of the most iconic ones. Villanova over UNC in 2016. We both agreed on this. This is an absolute bucket. Chris Jenkins. I mean... Nobody was expecting. You know what I, I actually realized when watching these? Look at how many fans are in the stands. <laughs> Those were the days. The fact that we don't okay. get that. But this was absolutely iconic. This was for the championship. It was amazing. Uh, and it, it just means more if it's for a national championship. I think that's the big part of this. Like right. I would argue that most people, when they think of the most iconic buzzer beaters in college basketball, don't put this one first. But when it is for a national championship, right. it has to hit harder, right? Like I remember at the time I was out at a bar in Nashville. And, uh, the, like, there was just a whole group of guys that had just surrounded around one TV. We were watching every moment of right. it. No, I don't think we really thought it was going to be that great a game. Right. The finish is what makes that a great game. And while I would argue that the Leitner shot is more sort of iconic to the history of right. college basketball, this one was for a championship so and one's for the chip. It feels right. like it's Right, exactly. That's, a, that's exactly right. The number two seed beating the number one seed, too, is, eh, I guess it's kind of a big deal. But, you know. I mean, you know, didn't need a buzzer beater when he won by 30 for a championship. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so these are our five. I don't know if you guys have anything that you would like to add to this list. We actually had a ton that we kind of threw at our producers, and this is what we kind of came up with. So. Yeah, I, I like this. Was a, a, a this That's Christine's way of saying don't at her because she doesn't want blame if you don't like yeah, the list. There were a million. She's immediately we throwing 10, us under the bus. You no, know, this is five. Whatever. Wow. So we'll certainly never forget that buzzer beater. Jalen Suggs, good offensively. Also very good defensively, which brings us to our full court coverage connected by Xfinity X5. So Fitz. That was a fancy that graphic. Was really Can fancy. we admit that was that like, was fancy? It, made like, me, it reminded me of like one of those um, those games that we used to play with our thumbs. Yeah, you know yeah, we had to look, yeah, 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 yeah. A thousand percent. <laughs> I like that we strolled that memory lane. Look. Oh As we talk about the defensive side of the ball, uh -huh. look, it's easy to look at what Suggs did at the end and remember yeah. the big shot. But let's also talk about who he's been as a defensive player, not just in this game, but throughout the course of the tournament. I mean, Suggs has been really epitomizing what Gonzaga is, which is active on both ends of the floor. It'd be easy, by the way, to give Timmy some love here but uh, uh, as well. But Suggs has really been able to get in there and see, look back at overtime. I mean, not only was he making the game-winning shot, but he was active on the other side as well. And you see the numbers there, two, five, two steals, five boards, and a block versus UCLA Saturday. The best way I can say it is a disruptor. Both those guys, Timmy and Suggs, were able to constantly get in the way late in the game, really assert their dominance in it. And if you look overall throughout the course of the entire tournament, I don't know if we're giving Suggs enough love for who he is as a defensive player. Above and beyond that, eight steals, 27 boards, two blocks in the NCAA tournament. It's the 27 boards that really stand out to me. They uh -huh. crash towards the net, but then they're able to quickly get back on the right. other end and create offense out of it. It's really special to watch how dynamic they, they are on both ends of the floor. Jalen Suggs was a football player in high school. He is an all-around athlete. And I think that, by the way, is part of why we're going to see his stock continue to rise oh, in yeah. the NBA lottery conversation. Oh, yeah. I mean, we became so convinced Cade Cunningham was number one, but we've seen this in the past. John Morant, great tournament, suddenly the number exactly. two pick. It's crazy. Rightfully so. Like, I think a lot of people weren't paying attention to the overall quality of Suggs' uh -huh. athleticism until this tournament. It's really opened eyes. Well, we will get to see his athleticism again tonight because he's going to have to take on somebody else in a Baylor team. Get on say. We now welcome in friend of the show, King McClure King, obviously a Baylor alum. He is at the game right now, ready to hold it down. King, you know a lot about this Baylor team. Jalen Suggs is going to have to guard somebody on that team. Who is he going to have to look out for? 
Hey, right, Jalen Suggs is going to have to look out for Davion Mitchell, a.k.a. off night. The kid is playing terrific. Last game, 12 points, 11 assists, getting his teammates in the right spots, making his teammates better overall. But I think what he should be more worried about is the other side. Jalen Suggs on offense, I don't think he's seen a guard like Davion Mitchell defensively because Davion Mitchell is a problem on that end. So he needs to be more worried about offensively than defensively. So, King, like, walk me through what you expect tonight because I feel like I got a little recency bias. Yeah. I just saw Baylor look good. <laughs> I saw the Zags struggle. So suddenly I'm rethinking everything. Yeah. What are you expecting? <laughs> Well, I'm expecting a great game, a high-scoring game. I think what's going to come down to is rebounding. Mark Vidal is an absolute monster on the glass. I don't know if they have anybody, the Zags, to keep him off the glass. So I think it's going to ultimately come down to rebounding and defense. Who can guard who? Who can get more stops? I think Baylor can guard Gonzaga, but I don't know if Gonzaga can guard Baylor. So I mentioned that you are a Baylor alum. You played basketball at Baylor. And the last game that you played was against Gonzaga. You recently <laughs> tweeted something. Explain to the people what yeah. happened. Uh, that was my last game ever. Second round of the tournament. We just beat Syracuse. So this was actually the last tournament that ever was, was played because last year they didn't have one because of COVID. So we played Gonzaga second round. Brandon Clark had like 36 and 18 boards. Absolutely dominated us. We had no answer. Last game, my tournament. I think I went out with a bang, though. I had in, I think, 16, <laughs> 16 and 8. Um, so, you know, I did I my thing last that. game, but. <laughs> oh, you think like you but, don't know. It, I mean, come it, on, it, he it, knows. Is, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, so we have to get your prediction here, but I'm going to get you twofold here. I want to get you your prediction, and then also yeah. knowing that how your career ended, also that there was no NCAA tournament last year. Give me your prediction. I'm pre I think I know where you're going to go. When you tell us, also tell me what it would mean for you with all your history to watch Baylor win a yeah. national championship tonight. Well, I mean, surprisingly, I, I think the thing is Zach is going to win. Oh. Just playing. You thought. No. <laughs> I was like, you thought. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. You already know. Hey, Y'all already know where I'm going with this. Baylor, I think is Baylor's going to win. I think Baylor can guard Gonzaga. Gonzaga can't guard Baylor, as I said earlier. Uh, so I'm going with Baylor. Got to rock with my guys. And for me personally, uh, just all the blood, sweat, and tears that I put in in four years and everything that the programs uh, came from, ground zero, where Coach Drew started, uh, it's basically like my family. I mean, you always want to see a family succeed. You want to see a family do well. Uh, so I think this is mean a lot. Honestly, I feel like if they win the national championship because I play with a lot of those guys, it's like I win too. So that, that, that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, my guys do the best. Look, I agree with all that, by the way. And just remember, we've been on the Baylor train since the get-go. Oh, yeah. We've had you guys on, like, a bunch of Baylor talk <laughs> on here. So when the Baylor yeah. National Championship swag comes out, just remember, large, right large. I mean, you know I've been rocking with you for a minute, so it, uh, we already knew that. All right, you nah, said Look, Christine, Christine, I already know. Fitz, uh, you, you kind of knew to the band. I just want free right. stuff. Come <laughs> on, man. Let's, we can let Fitz be on the bandwagon. Yeah. We can let Fitz be on the bandwagon. Nah, nah, not, not, till, not till Fitz gives me that sweatshirt. Once Fitz gives me that sweatshirt, then we can talk about some baseball. Oh, it better be some Maybe. good natty championship <laughs> swag. All right, we'll talk. We'll talk to you all fair. All right, you said it. Defense wins championship. That's our full court coverage connected by Xfinity X5. Thanks so much, King. I'm just I was saying. I'm gonna say, dang. Like <laughs> I, I've learned something. King is now in Jay Will status. Like Jay Williams is one of those guys that can like, like you don't know how suddenly you got tricked out uh -huh. of your lunch money. That's Jay Will all day. Like yeah. King's already taking stuff from me. I was trying to get free stuff from him. Um, I will say I like that you said you've been rocking with Baylor for a minute because I feel like we have predictions later in the show and I don't feel like you're gonna say Baylor. Look, I gotta go. What? I gotta hedge my bet here. I'm trying to get free stuff. Like I said, like, I just want free things that say national championship on them. Like, I, that's all. I, it's a very simple need, Christine. Like, I'm transparent. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so we got our friend, our good sis, Monica McNutt. She's gonna join us to talk a little bit more about this matchup. Oh, with the shimmies, too. I love it. Uh, let's take a quick look at how we got here, both Baylor and Gonzaga, before we get into this conversation. Both won seeds. So they had very similar paths to the championship, but who would you say, Fitz, had the hardest path? I think both of these teams were substantially better than the teams that they faced. But Baylor had a tougher task to me to get through. Wisconsin, even though they didn't play well in the tournament, came into the tournament with some level of expectation, as did Arkansas. I mean, if you look at Gonzaga's side of it, they had UCLA. Maybe maybe you could argue, argue Creighton. It just felt like it was a mismatch every step of the way. So I give Baylor the tougher road. Monty, what do you think? I agree. Arkansas was supposed to be a big-time sleeper and might have been the team that tripped up Baylor. For the most part, when you look at what Gonzaga had to go through, 
I think, listen, Vegas had Gonzaga at minus 14 in the matchup against UCLA, and I'm pretty sure that that was the largest run um, over the course of the tournament, and look what happened there. While it was a tremendous game, nobody even anticipated UCLA being in that spot, so Baylor has definitely had to work harder in the tournament and all season, which is why I'm saving my prediction with you guys for a little bit later, but hint, hint, (laughs) wink, wink on my logic. (laughs) I don't know what she's going to (laughs) say. I would like to say, I I know this is just like a random note that I, we've had you on the show before. For some reason, your camera looks impeccable right now is it a different one i mean that's just like a logistical question you can just text me that later if you want to but it looks good okay (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna just say it looks real good okay so as you as we look at this matchup this is a big deal but i do want to get your reaction from the last matchup that we saw me and fitz were talking about it before what was your reaction when you saw that jalen suggs buzzer beater Listen, Johnny Juzang made an impeccable play by following up his shot, right? Immediately after the ball goes through the basket, y'all, I swear, my first thought was, y'all, they're not going to stop him. They're not even going to get in front of him. They're not going to disrupt him. And then it was like, oh. (laughs) And I sat there for approximately four and a half minutes just kind of taking the shot in. But I was so, I get it. It's the end of the game. You're terrified of fouling. But they didn't even shadow him until he was practically in the air into that jump shot. So an incredible shot by Jalen Suggs. A uh, few obviously talked about them practicing that shot every day in practice. He definitely used the glass on purpose. Shout out to him because the glass gives you the most room for error. And that time, the glass came through, honey. Well, Monica, you just said uh, definitely afraid of fouling. Like, I-, I think we're sort of underselling the end of regulation. I mean, Timmy steps into the lane, takes the charge. By the way, which I thought was a good call, but that was an aggressive moment from a player to come in and say, look, I know. Like, he had to know. He could get there and get set because if he doesn't, he screws that whole thing up if he doesn't get those feet set. You're 100% right, Fitz. And as someone who never successfully took a charge, like, that is a big-time bet-on-yourself moment, and it worked out well for him. I mean, incredible awareness to be outside of the restricted area and the whole bit. Um, But that was a really gutsy play, if I may call it that. But I just think the end of regulation – you knew you had two teams that fought and scrapped. And for anybody that is, like, surprised by UCLA, I honestly wasn't that surprised because if you looked at their statistics throughout the run of the tournament, they let teams shoot in the mid-40s outside of, like, Abilene Christian, who they actually out-rebounded as well. But they have their own formula. We're going to slow the pace down. We're going to get our guys the shots that we know they're capable of hitting. um, And we're just going to play ball. And I think that grit is something that you can't account for. The way they defended Gonzaga – Man, like, let's, let's just talk about it. Can't stop talking about it. So, but <laughs> now, now take me to the Baylor side, because Baylor now watches this. How much okay. of what Baylor just saw can be transferred in? Like, how much can they take from UCLA? Well, first off, I just heard my bro King McClure on the show, and he's absolutely right about Davion Mitchell drawing the matchup against Jalen Suggs. And I'm not saying he's going to hold Jalen to any sort of offer, but what I think we can't, overlook when we talk about defensive matchups is how hard guys have to work to be who we're accustomed to them being. And we just saw it on the women's side. Like, Paige had to work so hard against Arizona, and you saw what happened against that. So I think when you think of Butler, Teague, and Mitchell in particular, and I call them the three-headed monster, all three of those guys can put on straps. All four, if you include um, that fourth guard who I'm forgetting. Forgive me, young man, you've had a great year. But Baylor (laughs) hangs their hat on the defensive side of the ball, but they also shoot the three, the best in the country, literally. So it's not like we're saying, oh, this is defense versus offense. No, no, no. We're saying this is two very complete teams against one another. And to me, the matchups just favor Baylor just a bit. I'm not sure that Gonzaga can defend Baylor. Okay, so you mentioned the fact that Baylor is the best three-point shooting, three-point shooting team in the country. Gonzaga has it. There, It's going to be a tough matchup for them. What exactly do they need to do? I, I feel like I know what you're going to say in your prediction. But what does Gonzaga need to do to get this win? I think Gonzaga has to go through Drew Timmy. He's a capable passer, capable scorer. Obviously, he makes tremendous defensive plays. If they play through Timmy, I think that they will force this Baylor defense to sink in and account. The one knock on Baylor consistently we heard this season was that they're a little bit weak on the interior. If Timmy makes them play, pay, excuse me, not just by scoring, but also finding the right guys, because Kispert and IIE, Suggs, all those guys can hit shots. But if you collapse the defense first and then you go to those outside shots, then Baylor has to rethink their defensive strategy, right? If they can't go through Timmy, because I agree, Mark Vidal is at least a big body. He's got to stay out of foul trouble to contend with Timmy. If they don't go through Timmy, then I think we're going to see a lot of one-on-one ball because, to me, Baylor is in help, help and recover. But for the most part, they just put their straps on and defend. Ultimately, do you feel like Gonzaga is going to be able to limit Baylor's shooters? 
Um, I think we'll see some impressive schemes from both sides. And so I think limit is a good word, uh, Christine. Stop. I don't see stopping happening. But what's limiting? Like, is limiting letting a team that shoots 38% come down to 35? Like, how do you define limiting? I think the parameters of the ball game will shape that. And the other thing I think we've seen from both of these teams, particularly in the last matchup for Gonzaga UCLA, the percentages of stuff doesn't don't matter. It's the timeliness of buckets. And so the limit to me comes in, you limit in the big time momentum moments. Because either one of these teams, you know, you get another three at the buzzer, either way, that's the ball game, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that is going to be key that both of these teams are really keyed in on momentum and try to find a way to create some runs. I don't think there's going to be much distance between these two teams over the course of the ball game, though. You know, Monica, I think it's kind of interesting. We've seen two teams throughout the course of this entire year that have clearly been the best two teams in college mm -hmm. basketball. Like, we've tried to put other teams in the conversation, but this has really been Gonzaga's Baylor's year, right? And we get that as a final. Like, that's not something that happens in every sport or even every year in college yeah, basketball. So, like, doesn't I, to me, you tell me what you think. I think it puts a little bit more emphasis and, like, meaning to what we're seeing that we know we got through all this craziness, but now we got the top two teams in all the land. I 100% agree with you, Fitz. And I think, first of all, I commend all the student athletes, coaches, administration, um, the health professionals, the training staff for a year that we had to be extremely mindful when it comes to health and safety protocols. So tip of the cap to all the teams competing in both the men's and women's tournament. But for these two teams to be here, it definitely speaks to me, to the talent on their roster. You need a little bit of luck and, a, and some talent to get to this point, right? Um, I can only imagine the sacrifices of this year, um, just in terms of not being able to hang out with your friends. I've talked to some programs where, you know, you don't even get to use the locker room the way you once were accustomed to. And so it speaks to a tremendous amount of focus to get to this point. Now, the fact that we actually have the game that we wanted very much so during the regular season, and unfortunately, now we know, was postponed due to COVID, um, this is what you dream of. I think championship games don't always live up to the hype. But I'm 100% willing to put money on the fact that this game will live up to all that. I want to go back to a, qu a question that I asked a couple of seconds ago talking about the three-point shooting from Baylor. But I want to go on the Gonzaga side because I feel like this is a stat that I find is very interesting. The Bears allow just 0 0.889 points per possession in transition. Gonzaga, meanwhile, scores 1.208 points per, pos per, per possession. I cannot talk today. Uh, do you think that it's Baylor will be able to show slow down Gonzaga in transition in this matchup? This is the one thing that I think gets a little bit tricky for me, because if we just take a page out of the UCLA playbook, they did not run with Gonzaga. In fact, they didn't even try. They literally had zero fast break points in that ball game. Baylor, however, is capable of getting out in transition, right? I, I, it's really splitting hairs. I think I give Gonzaga an ever so slight edge in transition. I mean, I think Jalen Suggs is tremendous, but so is Jared Butler. I think the way Gonzaga fills the lane is a little bit different than what Baylor does. So if we get into a flat out foot race, that essentially would neutralize what I think is one of Baylor's big strengths. And that's their ability to defend, particularly in the half court. So I think if we get into a transition ball game that favors Gonzaga just slightly, um, but, I, you know, Baylor's not going to turn down easy opportunities. And I say this at every level of basketball. Coming down, woo, 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 call a play, <laughs> like setting up in your half-court set, that's a hard day at the office. So if you can get easy transition buckets, get it, unless you're UCLA and you had a very deliberate plan. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Things I'll never say. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Like, this doesn't work for me. I could try. I, I, woo, it. Woo, I say no. it all the time. I say it all the time. Okay, Monica, now is the moment. What is your prediction for this matchup? All right. <clears throat> as much as we're all in on the history of this, that it has the potential to be made. And if Gonzaga does it, fantastic. I just don't know where 27 games you've won – consecutively by double digits up until UCLA is necessarily a good a good thing, particularly in this moment with such a tight turnaround from such an emotionally draining and charged basketball game. On the other hand, you got the Bears who had to roll through the Big 12, so I'm going sick them, and I'm taking Baylor tonight. Ooh, that's actually really good. We were talking about how strong the Big 12 basketball is, and everybody has to play everybody. I know that people didn't really play that many out-of-conference games this year, but the Big 12 is pretty tough. All right, Fitz, who you got? Well, I, as I said earlier to King, I've been on the Baylor uh, bandwagon for a long time for that free stuff. But we all know <laughs> from the beginning of the year, time, for the beginning of the year, I said – 
Gonzaga's going to win the national championship. We're making this difficult. So, you know, Zag, stick with me. Give me free stuff. I'm going Zags in this one. I think <laughs> what Monica said at the end, though, is really key here. Like, this is going to be an incredibly fast-paced game to me. You've got two teams that are capable of running, and it's against their instinct to slow down in this situation. They've been running all year. They can run on anybody. It's going to be hard for them to slow down. They're going to go with that instinct. It's going to be one of the most high-scoring games we've seen in a championship game in years, but I think Gonzaga will because they're going to run so much. That favors Gonzaga. They win in, a, in an absolute shootout. Heck of a game. Okay, so I'm going to say something. Oh. I, this is my prediction. I have Gonzaga in my bracket. I told the producers Gonzaga, but then when I was talking to King, I forgot. I've been rocking with the Bears and the Big 12 fist <laughs> for a very long time. And, Monica, you mentioned the fact that they've been playing in, big, in the Big 12, and I feel like the Big 12 basketball is just superior to everybody else. So I'm just going to go You're with, changing your I'm pick. Gonna go with, I'm going to go with Baylor now. Okay. Even though my bracket says completely <laughs> otherwise. But I did have this matchup going into the final, so I feel like it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't feel good about this anymore. Okay. You two are both much smarter than I am. So, like, now I'm on an island all by myself. <laughs> well, I mean. It's going to be a great game, so we all it's win. It's going to be good. Yeah. Exactly. Heck yeah. Exactly. Okay. Thanks so much, Mon. Uh, that's all we got. We got a game. Literally. Woo! Right now. It's going to be a good one. Thank Bye you guys so much for watching. Well, uh, countdown to the final connected by Xfinity. Bye, Mon. See you. Literally, the, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Please. Just showing you my moves. Please give me off this camera. I can't do it with this. All right. No, thanks for watching. Stop countdown me to, to the final connected by Xfinity X5. We'll see you guys next year. <laughs>